Hi, it's Dustin Lanier. Thanks for listening. Please find me on LinkedIn for original public sector operations content every week. And please reach out to me if I and my team of procurement professionals at Civic Initiatives can help you be a public procurement change agent. Jillian, I wanted to get on the horn with you today and do a quick podcast entry on a project we've been working on with you. And then there was a, a cool announcement today that seemed like a good time to do some of it. So tell people who you are, and then we'll go into some of the discussion. Sounds great. So I'm Jillian Gillette. I'm program manager of California Integrated Mobility for Caltrans, which is California's Department of Transportation. So we've been helping you with a bunch of innovative approaches to procurement to try to change up some of the ways that some of the public transit infrastructure is is bought to feed a broader mission of public transit that you've been working on. And I mentioned a little exciting side note today. Let's save that one for a minute. Just talk a little bit about how you're trying to leverage procurement to drive program goals. Thanks. It's a great question. So it turns out that so California has a lot of transit agencies. We have over 400, depending on how you count, define it. But some of them are really small and contracting and procuring is almost beyond their capacity. It's very difficult to, for them to buy things, let alone to do all the due diligence. So it turns out that states can purchase on behalf of local agencies. And that turns out to be an extraordinary benefit for transit agencies and from the program here at Caltrans, because it means that we can do the diligence on what are the new, um, what are standards in our industry. We can find the best practices and we can build them into procurements that are done at the state level and result in master service agreements that local agencies can just draw down uh, relying on our pre-procurement. And we can also open it up to the rest of the country. Yeah. So I guess what I really find interesting about procurement when thought through strategically is you can, by saying the way that you want a system to work and how you want people to interact with it, you can absolutely create contracts that accomplish program goals if you are really thoughtful on how you create a sourcing model. And when I was with Texas, we used to do that kind of work with the Council on Competitive Government. And several of my people have been working very diligently with you and a great consulting group called the Rebel Group, who has been a great subject matter expert on public transit. So we're really proud of some of the work we've been able to do with you and very pleased in your trust on that. So one of your flagship RFPs is out on the street now, if I'm not mistaken, and, and a due date in a couple of weeks. So maybe talk about what's on the street. Well, you know, within the confines of what you can talk about with an active procurement, like, you know, so uh, where, well, where that's going to take you. It's a, it's a procurement for payment hardware and basically for the point of sale terminals for transit, which are called validators. And then the software as a service that calculates the fares and tells, it tells the payment processor what the right price is. So that in a nutshell is the premier marquee procurement and the bids are due on the 9th or the 8th of September. And the idea is to make available to the industry, not just a kit of parts, but a kit of interoperable parts where the operators can have confidence that each of the pieces will work with each other, mm -hmm. that no custom integration is required. So if somebody's listening to this and sends it to somebody who sends it to somebody who sends it to somebody who says, oh, wow, I should have responded to that. How would they find that right now if they wanted to know is there any kind of a reference number or do they just go to a website and search for it? How would somebody look at it if they haven't seen it so far, but feels like this is something they should know about? Yeah. So if they search for pads, uh, so California has an e-procure site that's run by our uh, the, the Department of General Services. So if you search for pads on that site at Cal e-procure, you'll find that, find it that way, an easier way to find it. Uh, if you're interested in the transit and payment space, is to go to camobilitymarketplace.org, which is our program's website. And you can, and the RFP, D Department of General Services RFP is linked there. So you can get to the, to the procurement event package there. And the thing that prompted me to see if we could jump on real quick is I just saw a LinkedIn post where the state of Illinois had indicated their formal interest in this. And I know that you've been talking to some 
some of the Pacific Northwest partners as well. So how do you visualize this thing having impact and value in other states and kind of what, what are you seeing in terms of that, those stated formal points of interest? Payments is an interesting area to be working in because it's so much about an interoperable customer experience. And generally that works really well in the United States. Like everybody knows what a point of sale terminal is and knows how it works. You know, everyone's all they change little bits and pieces of it, but it's this, the customer knows it, right? That's how you buy coffee, dry cleaning, everything else in the planet. And so we want to bring that to transit to help transit uh, agencies become merchants in that sense and use and get, obtain all of the advantages uh, of that sense. And because that already that's how the globe pays for things already, it makes a lot of sense to, to open that to our to, to local agencies in, in other states. So indeed, we've been calling around to other DOTs and other local agencies and asking them to figure out how to open the door to get their state's permission to, to join California to reduce their costs too, and to make sure that, that the procurements are standardized, that they adhere to the standards that exist in payments and the standards that exist, you know, that exist in the other sort of branches of our program as we move forward and do more procurements. So I guess Illinois put out a, a letter. A letter. And yeah, it's an expression of interest saying, you know, we are the DOT. We obviously don't run transit. We won't be buying off of your procurement, but our local agencies can, and we're going to do everything we can to help to, to facilitate that if they're interested. Did I, And did other, have any other states made a formal statement? Yeah, so Oregon and Washington supplied their procurement language that so Oregon and Washington have a history of buying from California already. So there's sort of boilerplate language that's, that was already in the RFP from the get-go. Well, good. In net, you're working on a fairly innovative procurement that is specifically designed to accomplish program goals and it's getting attention from your peers and it's a great thing to spotlight. Thank you. Let's, uh, uh, let's save the taxpayer money. Yeah. Good, well, good luck with, with having... A robust response on the 8th and let's get some good outcomes. Yeah. And thanks very much for the questions. You know, your interest and leadership in driving strategic procurement has been really invaluable for us. And I think, you know, let's keep, keep it coming. Excellent. Thank you, Jillian. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Hi, it's Dustin Lanier. Thanks for listening. Please find me on LinkedIn for original public sector operations content every week. And please reach out to me if I and my team of procurement professionals at Civic Initiatives can help you be a public procurement change agent.